Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, for the last 17 years, my daily driving vehicle has been a 2003 Ford Ranger. And about 15 years ago, I built this half rack, I guess you want to call it, uh, for the back of the truck. I didn't want a full size rack and I didn't, uh, you could purchase these half racks. They had tails sticking up. I didn't like that. I wanted something less conspicuous, uh, yet something that was going to be functional. And for 15 years, I've had it on the back of my Ranger and it's worked great. I got no complaints. I like it so much that I'm going to make one for my 2020 GMC Sierra. So let's get started on today's project. Yeah, so we are starting out with some uh, 2 inch by 3 inch by 3 16 angle iron. This is what I'm going to use for the base that is going to be mounted to the top of the bed. Uh, I've just selected about 20 inches. That's uh, what I think is going to be enough from coming from the front of the bed back to give it the adequate, adequate <clears throat> support that it's going to need. You can see that right here, what I'm doing is I'm notching out the corner of the angle iron. Uh, and what this is going to do, it's going to allow me to uh, pass the back of the bed uh, on the top of the bed so that the angle iron goes flush all the way to the to the back of the bed. You'll see here in a minute um, on how that's going to work. But before I do that, I'm just getting everything cut up and I'm going to get it all ground down nice and smooth and kind of round these edges off a little bit, kind of deburr everything. And that'll be the first step. You can see right here how it slides right over and goes right to the back. That uh, switch just the way I was wanting it to work. All right, so this is some uh, inch and three quarter round tube, and this is 120 wall. This is something different than what I had on my other rack. I used some square tube on the other. Not that there was anything wrong with that, but this is the look that I was looking for on this one. And I've got the angles that I needed, and I've got those things cut out on the cutoff saw, and I'm just gonna weld them in place right here. Now you can see that uh, it's not exactly right in the center. Some of you guys might say this is not in the center. I've got it on the back part of that angle for a reason. And so that's uh, the way I decided to go with this. Marking the top, marking the height of the rack right here. And I've, uh, with a, a little angle finder right there, and I've got the desired angle that I need. And then take this over to my cutoff saw. Just be sure everything is square and Everything is just right before I make my cut. The idea is when I put the uh, top uh, bar in um, to get it as close as it possibly can uh, to minimize the, the gap that I may have for the, uh, you know, when I go ahead and weld it, weld it around. All right, so got it on the truck, bolted our clamps down temporarily, and then making my last measurements right here. And I take this over to the cutoff saw and cut it as well. All right, lay it right on top there. And I like the way everything is fitting, so now it's time to start tacking things together. So I'm making the measurements right here, and I'm clamping it down on the fixture table. Now, it does have a little bit of a taper from front to back. It's not much. It's about an eighth of an inch, maybe three-sixteenths of an inch of a taper. The bed actually tapers front to back slightly, and I just want to be sure I have a nice tight fit in there. And after double-checking the angle on, on everything, lining it all up, Looks like we're ready to go. I'm operating off the HTP Pro Pulse 220 MTS here. I'm using 35 thousandths wire in 90-10 gas, 90% argon, 10% CO2. And I like my settings at this, at right at about 250 inches a minute. All right, so after everything's all tacked together, it looks like it's going to be just fine. So um, clamp everything down so it doesn't move around too much and go ahead and start the welding process. On the top part here, I'm not too concerned about um, look. It is going to get ground down on the top. The bottom is a little bit different. There's going to be no grinding here, so I'm trying to do the best I can to leave leave something a little pretty on the bottom there. Uh, and the top, uh, like I said, I'll be grinding that down, so I didn't take as much time with that, but I sure I got some good penetration. You might see my torch lead holder there, my MIG gun holder. Um, I offer those up on my website at jimbosgarage.com. I also have uh, MIG, TIG, stick, angle grinder, and plasma cutters as well. If that's something that's interesting, you might want to check out the website. All right, so I got a little bit of welding to do here on the back side, trying to figure out the best way to prop this thing up. And I found this uh, 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 
square right here and I thought the square is gonna be the ideal thing to do so prop it up like that fab square held it in place perfectly got the right angle I needed and I was able to go ahead and finish this weld out all the way around all right so on to the side supports wasn't certain what I was going to do here it took me a little time to think about it I found this piece of uh, eighth inch by four inch flat bar stock that I had left over from another job and uh, I'm able to utilize the whole piece right here I'm just going to cut it in half and I got a little taper to it I thought that would just add a little something to it but look add a little something to the look to it couldn't quite get it through the porta band here had to cut a piece off to make it uh, to make it work you know this, that's the thing about the porta band it's, it's, it's an awesome saw uh, you know it's really good for the for the shop right here but man it's only got a five inch deep deep throat and uh, sometimes it's hard to get some uh, bigger cuts through there but hey man, I should get it done all right over here to the Burke King and kind of just soften up the edges to give it a little bit of character give it a little bit of look to it before we go ahead and start uh, welding it together and I had to knock the corner off right there to allow it to sneak by the welding bead right on the very bottom so I'm going to match the angle going up uh, from the tube and uh, you can just see I've got everything tacked right in I'm going to go ahead and just weld this all the way across in one pass uh, you know this is something that uh, is not going to get ground down it's actually going to be a look that I'm going to have uh, on there and I'm going to come right down from the top down as well. So I'm trying to make it look as clean as I possibly can. On the back side, not, uh, not so much. Just a couple, two or three beads. About an inch or inch and a half long is all I really need. Do the same thing here on the other side. You know, what this is doing is it's adding a lot of support for that bar. Uh, you know, so, you know, this sometimes gets a lot of weight on it. And I noticed that with my other one. Um, there was a little bit of flex to it, so I'm hoping this uh, will take out that flex. Plus, it gives a little bit of uh, uh, look to the rack itself. All right, so on the last pass, you might have uh, noticed that I was pushing the uh, pushing the puddle. Well, this time I'm pulling the puddle. Now it can go either way. You know, whatever is most comfortable for you and the position that you're welding in. Uh, I just thought I'd just do something a little bit different. Um, either way, it doesn't matter to me. It's just, uh, again, whichever is most comfortable in the position you're doing, uh, whatever works. All right, so time for some tie downs here. Thought about this, didn't know what to do. Went over to my scrap bin right here, and I had these are anchor bolts I used for one of my uh, you know, concrete pours. I had a whole bag of them, and I used the, the long part and created a Nelson stud for it on a couple of columns, and I had these left over. I did not want to get rid of them. I thought I'd use them for something, so I threw them in the drawer, and here we go. Uh, just going to round the edges over a little bit, give it a little taper to it. And I'm just going to weld them on right here. And they're going to they're gonna act as a, a hook for me to you know, hook my rope to or my, or my straps or tie downs or whatever I'm going to be using. I use rope is what I use. I've got loops tied on the end of it and I, and I do a, a special knot that uh, really cinches things down. So this is what's going to work well for me. I just cleaned them up from, with wire wheel here. and. A non-woven pad, you know that, that this is a coarse non-woven pad. You know, I, I get all my all my abrasives from Mercer Industries, and uh, you know they got some pretty good products over there. And uh, that non-woven pad worked really well. This is the coarse, and it just t really takes the the this little sharp edges off and provides something um, uh, that makes a really smooth transition. All right, just a little wire wheel right here to clean things up. You know, I'm going to do this all the way across the uh, you know the front, the back, and you can see that this is the the top that I'm grinding down right here. I'm trying to just create the a nice smooth line. You can see the line that it uh, that creates right there. I'm just trying to give it that nice smooth look, and it worked well with the uh, with the angle grinder right here. A little bit difficult getting around the tight inside corners, but I managed to get that done. You know, this is going to get powder coated uh, once I smooth this off a little bit. Um, you know, that's all going to go away. All right, one final wipe down with the non woven pad everywhere to be sure that there's nothing, no sharp edges anywhere. All right, there it is, complete. You know, that didn't take me too long. I think I got this in an afternoon and uh, it turned out just the way I was hoping. We'll get this over to the powder coaters and uh, get this, uh, show you some shots of this installed on the truck.
All right, there it is. Got it back, got it installed. Like I say, it looks uh, real nice. You guys did a great job over there powder coating it. Gloss black definitely matches the truck. Looks like it was part of the truck originally. Can't really tell. It's got a rack on it unless you're looking for it. Um, really happy the way this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe for more video. And check us out on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.